Okay, everybody. Um, oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's Mark's turn to talk to us today, so, Mark, I'll ask you to get straight down to business. All oh, right. Now, following on from what we were discussing last week in Susan's tutorial on approaches to marketing, uh, you were going to give us a quick rundown on a new strategy for pricing, which is now being used by many large companies, known as revenue management. Uh, before we go on to your actual tutorial paper on sales targets. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, okay, well... So, yeah. what exactly is revenue management? Well, it's a way of managing your pricing by treating things like mm, airline tickets and hotel rooms rather more as if they were perishable goods. Yeah, I just tried to book a ticket yesterday for Perth, and would you believe there are three different prices for the flight? Right, <laughs> and what was the rationale for that? Well... The travel agent said it depended on when you book and the length of the stay. Like, uh, it's cheap if you stay away for a Saturday night, presumably because this isn't business travel, and um, even cheaper if you buy a ticket where you can't get a refund if you have to cancel. Uh -huh. In that case, the ticket costs about half the price. You wouldn't think it would make that much difference, would you? Well, it does. And that's basically because the airlines are now treating their seats like a commodity. You see, if you want a seat today then you pay far more for it than if you want it in three weeks' time. That seems rather unfair. Well, not really. When you think about it, that's just common sense, isn't it? Well, I suppose so. Uh, what this actually means is that in the same row of seats on the same flight, you could have three people who have all paid a different price for their tickets. And is this just happening in Australia? No, no, it, it's the same all over the world. Airlines are able to market a seat as a perishable product with different values at different stages of its life. Well, like mangoes or apples at the market. Yeah, it's exactly like that. The fact is that the companies are not actually interested in selling you a cheap flight. They're interested in selling the seats and flying airplanes that are full. Uh, Mark, hmm? uh, why do you think revenue management has come about? Well, as far as I can see, there are two basic reasons. Firstly, because the law has been changed to allow the companies to do this. You see, in the past, they didn't have the right to keep changing the prices of the tickets. And secondly, we now have very powerful computer programs to do the calculations and so the prices can be changed at a moment's notice. So you mean 10 minutes could be critical when you're buying a plane ticket? Absolutely. That's right. yep. yeah. And I understand we've almost reached the stage where these computer programs that the airlines are using will eventually be available to consumers to find the best deals for their travel plans from their home computer. Heavens, what a thought. So the travel agent could easily become a thing of the past if you could book your airline tickets from home. Yeah. Are there any other industries using this system, or is it restricted to the airline business? No, well, many of the big hotel groups are doing it now. Mm. That's why the price of a bed in a hotel can also vary so much, depending on when and where you book it. It's all a bit of a gamble, really. Yeah, and hire car companies are also using revenue management to set their tariffs, because they're also dealing with a commodity if you like. So the cost of hiring a car will depend on demand. Well, uh, thank you, Mark, for that overview. That no is trouble. well researched. Now, uh, let's get on with your main topic for today. I have to say that China at the moment is far more developed than Vietnam is. If you want to see pretty skyscrapers, amazing cities, China's far, far, far ahead as far as Vietnam is concerned. Vietnam is far, far, far more developed as far as the internet is concerned and being open to the world. If you want to see Facebook and YouTube and, and be a part of the whole global thing that's going on in the world these days, Vietnam's great. China is very cut off. It's designed that way. It's got to do with control. And uh, that is a huge, huge factor when it comes to the two different countries. One thing that struck me straight away, which I find very strange, is the lack of animosity towards foreigners in Vietnam. I fully expected, because I, I have white skin, I look like an American, that I would have, you know, sort of scowls or people that were not very happy with me, but I found the complete opposite. I found very friendly, very open people who absolutely were very genuine and, and honest with me and, and lovely. Whereas in China, a little bit of malice and uh, an air of caution thrown in there as well. You very often hear about these, uh, well, sometimes they say 100 years of humiliation, sometimes 200 years of humiliation. China's been taken advantage of by foreign powers for centuries and been humiliated. And it's kind of like a cry bully thing where they go like, oh, you guys are so mean. You always take advantage of us, so, you know, you suck. 